Hello and welcome to my channel. Welcome to Best Self Guide. I am in the middle of this experiment of 30 slim days when I'm tracking every day of my journey in this short video blogs where I'm reporting what, what I did, what I didn't, and generally it's a rant uh, about my day. So day 11, um, no coffee, no alcohol, limited carbs and all these good things. How are we doing? Uh, the day went well and what I did differently, I uh, actually, I'm, as you know, tracking every single expense on my credit card and give it a, just a second thought and thorough, thorough evaluation. Do I really need it? Can I replace it? Can I live without this and so on? So two discretionary items that I bought so far in 12 days are this um, Iceland wool mittens, 75 bucks, and two tins, 12 pencils each, of 12 color pencils by Faber-Castell. I like coloring and we have a big coloring box, but Steven is using it and I thought it would be helpful if I have my own tin box and I actually can refill it with pencils from the big one and take with me and yes the pencils are remarkable quality but primarily I bought it for these amazing tins so that's my 22 and 30 dollars so about 50 bucks for two and Iceland mittens that's another 75 and that's $125 for two things that are kind of a luxury, luxury things that are not essential spending. So what I did, I printed these pictures and plunked them into my expense log in this budget journal. And what it does, it reminds me that I am rewarded for, for my efforts. I'm not just, you know, drinking water and um, eating bread all all the time i actually have some luxury things around me and it reminds me here that nope no more spending because that's our january uh, luxuries but it also satiates my brain because my brain every time i look at it feels rewarded feels satisfied over and over and over again and i started doing something like this last year just by getting the highlight purchases of the month and just reminding yourself, yeah, this is those are the things you, you keep buying. So stop buying anything anything else. I, I needed uh, warm mittens because I have several pairs of gloves, suede and leather, even with lining, even with fleece lining, they don't work as well. And my hands get very cold when we go hiking. I used to have mittens like this, couldn't find it, so I had to replace them, and uh, it is what it is. Now, uh, the other remarkable thing on day 11, we hosted a good friend. I know this gentleman for almost now 20 years. Uh, we met uh, at uh, CIBC training back in those days, and I was so fascinated by his knowledge and his sense of humor and energy. And I'm so happy we connected and we didn't connect out of nowhere. I actually made an effort at the end of the year, I made a list of all the people I want to stay in touch with and I'm going through the list and I track that sent message to Marina, sent mes message to Natalie, sent message to John, approached uh, Natasha and Sergey and all those people that I'd like to see. I like their presence in my life. And if they choose not to get back to me, I will just, I will just make a note that it's probably, you know, time to take a break and move on. But I'm consciously making um, an effort to build those horizontal, horizontal relationships, as we, as I call it, that the stronger they are, the better your life is, and what. Is also fascinating when I go through the list of people I want to meet and do something with my calendar gets filled and this calendar remember the day one we are setting up the, um, the time planner 
it gets filled and I know I have something to look forward to in January and something to look forward to in April and Natalia I'm meeting her in May and John was coming to see us in January and that, and so on and so on and that feels again the void that maybe substances were filling before and now other things are filling and how wonderful it is to to reconnect with old friends and people you really want to see okay so day 11 um, as um, as you know we are building systems because there is no point no point I think to talk about to talk about healthy foods and exercise regimes and all those great things without actually having the house to put those good things into and that's why I'm a big believer that before implementing all these plans on healthy eating and exercising and less spending and so on and so on, it's necessary to build the system that will help you to, to do this. And this is what we are doing. We set up the time planner, we set up this gym bag, we cleared fridge and pantry. By the way, we are doing so great with this. As of uh, the beginning of the year, on our 12th day, our grocery bill is not even $200. We, of course, bought, had to buy some protein and some fresh vegetables, but we are trying to eat from our fridge and pantry. And oh my God, I open my fridge, it's half empty, and I look at my budget and it's half full. It's actually fuller than it would be on, 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 on different months. So we are doing great in this uh, direction and I think systems do help because when I want to munch something and I hit celery and carrots that's even peeled and chopped and prepared, I munch those great things and watch the scale scale show me what I want to see, a lower weight. Uh, it also I think helps with a bunch of other things, the skin, the fresher breath, and the overall energy. So day 11, um, we are continuing to build systems and by now we cleared up fridge and pantry, just as I just mentioned, cleared up closet. We'll talk more about fashion and clothes later, but at, the, at this stage you just want to divide everything into seasonals and reorganize it to make it more efficient. And last day was about organizing beauty supplies and just go through all of them before you buy a new one. That's it. And now when I have a bit more time, because usually at this time of uh, the day we would be opening wine and just watching some silly show and drinking. Now I have time and I declutter and look through things. Oh my God, I find so much, <laughs> so much. I, I didn't even know I had this. So today, logically, it would be about cleaning. And I'm not going to tell you how to clean your home, but what I would encourage you is to set up a strategy how going forward you will be keeping your dwelling tidy and clean. What I used to do for many years, and I love cleaning. I can't say it's bad uh, thing or good thing, but I love cleaning. I should have been a cleaner lady if... Uh, if it paid well I would probably would be cleaning other people's homes but having said that uh, after six hours of cleaning I actually feel devastated I feel depleted tired and the dangerous thing I would think oh I earned my reward and I would open a bottle of nice chill cremant and think yeah I just saved four hundred dollars on cleaners why can't I have my bottle of wine? But the tragedy is that it's not just one glass of wine, it's not just one bottle of wine. When I'm looking at my a monthly cost of alcohol, and this would be around $500, I may be better off paying cleaners to clean clean my home for $250 every, every two weeks. It probably would, would be a better deal. So that's that's a trap that we can get ourselves in that we are kind of good that cricket in the head says oh yeah yeah you you're doing well you overwork yourself or you over care for something you over clean and then you feel like you earned this reward which could be 
either shopping online or in person or it could be cigarette or wine some some bad stuff or chips cookies I, I don't have problem with chip cookies and cigarettes but definitely I had problem with alcohol so strategic cleaning first thing I would define looking at your scheduler what activities you do what how your day unfolds mine is from about five to six or from six to seven again depends if i have meetings with clients of course it depends on uh, if i have to do something with mark or steven but usually i just put it in the later afternoon i do my med meditation just to give me the extra boost of energy and after that put good book on audible or just podcast or what else uh, it's something on YouTube that I want to watch and I don't feel as deprived by doing the work because I'm also consuming something good something I have already lined up and at the beginning of the year I put a list of 12 books I'd like to read I checked if I have them on audible in my library by the way you can exchange books on um, audible which I kind of take advantage maybe too much but if I don't like the book, I, I have no problem calling and asking asking them to give me a credit back and just get a book I, I will I want to keep in my library. Sometimes I um, try to learn poems when I'm doing cleanings or cleaning or learn a song in French, and I would be repeating uh, the words. Uh, two line usually at the same at the time and while I'm washing dishes while I'm vacuuming then I come back check the text and do it again this way it's more like uh, a game and not as boring and I don't feel deprived I don't feel like I'm wasting time or wasting my life another strategy for cleaning is uh, setting up cleaning binder and making it more professional and efficient so in my binder, I have months from January to December. And if there is anything uh, I, I have to do in the house, such as changing filters, changing salt in water softener, doing carpet, deep carpet cleaning, or maybe some electrical work, I actually record the, uh, all these uh, service calls and it's extremely useful because down the road i can always open and see when i had this electrician come when i had this carpet cleaners here i can always call them back i don't have to look for their names because sometimes yes i, I get it you can find them on google but you need to know what you're looking for and it could be that they are not advertising anymore so i, I like to keep this here and in uh, the beginning of every month and every year I would have major things to be done it kind of gives you this uh, structure so uh, please uh, set something up for home upkeep I was fascinated by the work of clean mama's guide to peaceful home I got this book and I thought wow that is actually a very useful book and I took bits and pieces of the, the way she plans cleaning and what I liked about Becky's approach is that you have seasonal cleaning you have monthly cleaning you have annual cleaning and of course you have weekly and daily and I never thought of it like this I thought really you do something once a year let's say we do carpet cleaning uh, in upstairs uh, bedrooms maybe even every other year because it's expensive and we, we do vacuuming there is no need to do that deep wet cleaning but I also like it at the same time so that is not every month by all means but changing filters salt or cleaning your uh, uh, servicing your furnace servicing your a AC air conditioner cleaning fireplace those things they are seasonal and not um, not monthly but wiping your counters is daily thing so it's good to compartmentalize different activities according to season according to month according to week and according to day and becky's work is great i like 
the way she runs her business too. Very great, super organized lady. Uh, what I do differently, uh, her approach is that you have that cleaning time every day and let's say on Monday you only do toilets and then on Tuesday you only do laundry and on Wednesday you only dust. Everything around your house you just dust, dust, dust. Then you do floors, then you do other things and I think on Sunday you rest, you just do a regular clean up. That's great and I tried it but for me what works even better i have printed this plan plan of my house i laminated it and it, it is on my fridge it, it stays on my fridge at all times and what i do on monday monday is my master bedroom and walk-in closet time so i would concentrate on deep decluttering cleaning washing doing everything in just this area of course, we have to clean kitchen every day, and if something has to be tidied up, yes, we have to do it every day as well. But this area, not 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 master bedroom, but just just master bathroom and walk-in closet, that is in this part of my house, so that gets addressed on Monday, and I kind of use a, a marker by by showing how this place gets completed. I like this feeling of a. Of a glass being completed up, 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 up. I don't know. It's probably an alcoholic metaphor again, uh, but it's satisfying. Satisfying. See that? Okay, one day at a time, and this piece done. Next day, master bedroom. I do the laundry. I I wash it, and I don't do it every week. So it would be on a bi-weekly basis. Then next day would be dining room and I would declutter and do something there and even if it's less time even if it's not maybe a full hour I just like to think spatially in, instead of using uh, what Becky is using the approach of doing the same thing all across the house I actually like to do one area at the time it's not as efficient as her way I get it but it's more satisfying to me because I have this plan being gradually filled with color, if it makes sense. I have um, full basement, which is finished. I have a loft with two bedrooms upstairs and I have main floor. And I go through everything from beginning, from the top to the bottom in two weeks, ideally. And if I go through everything in one month, I'm also happy, not being crazy. Because we understand that you cannot do it every single day, but that's, that's how it does uh, happen. It also helps me not to be scattered, thinking, oh, I want to do this, and I want to do that, and maybe this, and maybe that. But I just look on the fridge, okay, today is my office day. It's Friday, it's the time to clear up the office. Maybe you want to do it a bit differently and make Sunday in preparation for week just to organize your walk-in closet, to steam everything, to wash everything, to do the laundry, and that's your walk-in closet idea. Then on Friday, maybe it could be um, um, it could be your bedroom, so you sleep in a fresh, a fresh bedding on the weekend when you can relax and maybe be more casual. However, but that is my approach to connect each day of two weeks to one premise and just dedicate your precious time to one premise and one premise only. And that is my strategic cleaning approach. Uh, so having the binder, having the system, booking this time when you are actually listening to something entertaining or educating or something that fulfills you. And this way you would not feel like you earned a reward as such as a bottle of wine because you kind of enjoyed the process along the way. Um, what else? Um, I'll talk maybe about cleaning more. Uh, other thing that I found, I don't know why I never did it before, is to have a cleaning Katie in every bathroom in the house. I don't know why I didn't have it. I had one shelf in a garage where I had my all, all my cleaning supplies 
but what I set up over time is a nice uh, farmhouse looking caddy that has windows to clean windows it has uh, all the supplies all the things to do the counters all-purpose cleaner and if since it's the bathroom maybe peroxide to clean the toilet and this way I'm not running around let's say I am in the bathroom I can actually quickly fix things because this caddy with three major major cleaning solutions is there and those three major cleaning solutions for me is something for the marrow which is windex or self-made stuff is also good something just for the counters which is all-purpose cleaning based on vinegar and something for the toilet itself which has to be harsher that would had that would have either bleach or peroxide is amazing uh, that that would take care of the the hard stuff in the toilet and it's so efficient to have those sprays in in the small bottles hidden in every powder room every bathroom every every place where you go pee or wash your hands pretty much uh, in the room and of course in the kitchen then what i do i create my own cleaning supplies it's so actually a very satisfying when you mix soda vinegar peroxide those kind of things and you make your own stuff cheaper it looks very classy because all my bottles are the same they they have unified look usually amber looking and i create my own labels so invested about a couple of years ago i invested in those self-adhesive um, sheets and i create labels in canva and just print this and stick it to uh, to the appropriate bottle i and they are uh, waterproof so when you pour water actually um ink stays stays on on the sheet and this is how i make my own cleaning supplies and at some point i even used my I, I actually at some point I used Becky's logo because she had some of the labels uh, with her package uh, that I purchased but then I thought I don't want to use Becky's logo it's a, a lot of my ideas too so I created my own thing and plugged it in on that label and just as if I'm creating something for myself so uh, yeah so things like this so all this is uh, a4 sheets i have a pack of them that will last me forever and i just print and cut it and put it on amber col color of amber sprays that are also all same shape and same same style and even when i leave them on the counter they look classy they actually don't look like i saw you know those cleaning cleaning bottles especially with mr clean on it they're so tacky they're not not attractive at all so when you create your own you almost feel like you're in fairmont hotel and this is lola Bo stuff so that's a tip for you so let's make day 11 not that we're going to clean all the house it's impossible just stop doing it stop doing it to yourself but let's set up the system how we will be addressing cleaning and if something it's not done sorry has to wait till tomorrow i'm not going to waste my life cleaning cleaning tidying up for uh, relentlessly this is my hour i do it whatever is done is done if it's not done it will wait okay i'll see you in the next day and thanks for watching bye